Hello, everyone, and welcome to AWS's Hands-On with DeepRacer. We're going to get started with a bit of history about DeepRacer and then move into reinforcement learning basics. From there, we'll begin discussing what the simulation looks like in AWS, followed by what that looks like when you bring your model to an event and have it run the course. We'll wrap up by taking a quick look at the DeepRacer car itself. First, let's discuss the origins of AWS DeepRacer. DeepRacer was founded on the principle of helping developers, programmers, and IT businesses better understand how artificial intelligence, machine learning, and reinforcement learning work using virtual and physical models. DeepRacer has three main components. The car, which is a 1 15th scale fully autonomous vehicle, complete with a monster truck chassis, a virtual simulator that allows your machine learning program to train itself on, and a league where people can post their best times, discuss new ways to teach their vehicles, and compete. Let's discuss a bit more about the mentality that goes into machine learning towards DeepRacer. To begin with, we have a model, which is really just the concept of DeepRacer, to race autonomous cars around the track. That leads to the agent, which is the car itself. The action portion of this formula is where things can get kind of tricky and where artificial intelligence will need to come into play. The DeepRacer goal is to correctly guess and understand the best course of action for each step it takes based on the current state of the vehicle. For example, in this slide on the state portion, we see that the car is able to perceive that it's going around a curve and is aiming to get into the inside of that curve to maximize speed. These combinations of states generate an environment by which the vehicle will need to successfully complete its task to reach the goal. Let's move on to reinforcement learning, or RL. Reinforcement learning is part of the bigger artificial intelligence umbrella of computing, particularly in the machine learning portion. Machine learning is the act of giving examples of data to a machine and allowing it to process them with a goal in mind. When we discuss machine learning, we typically are discussing three disciplines. Supervised learning is ML that uses labels to generate a deeper understanding of what that particular data set has in common with itself. For instance, facial recognition software might use names for labels on people's pictures to help the machine learn who is whom. Unsupervised learning is essentially the same thing but without the use of labels. So raw data may come through, and it will be up to the algorithms inside of the ML model to determine what that data means. <clears throat> a good use of this might be log data coming from a series of computers, where the ML model might read this data and interpret various generalizations, such as the time of day when applications get hit the hardest, or when someone could be attempting to hack into the system based off of anomalies. Reinforcement learning is what we'll be focusing on with DeepRacer. Reinforcement learning provides data to a model that you've built that then takes actions against that data to provide the best possible outcome using trial and error. A good example of reinforcement learning might be your favorite app application on your phone. When you ask it for directions, it will run a series of trial and error calculations to get you to your destination in as little time as possible. We actually do reinforcement learning in the real world all the time, from high fives for a job well done to teaching your dog to sit by using treats. We reward one another for positive or beneficial behavior. The inverse of that is to also let one another know when we've done something wrong, usually in the form of punishment or consequence for that bad action. If we go back to our formula from before, our agent is now in an environment where it's up against a particular state where it must choose an action. We use positive reinforcement in the form of rewards to tell it to try an action. The first time it tries, it might not receive many points. The next time, same thing. But the time after that, it could find a proper way to say, take a turn, and it gets rewarded with a certain number of points for doing that. Each of these attempts from the time the car starts from the start line to when it either fails or crosses the finish line are called episodes. And when compiled, generate a way for the agent to operate in an opportune fashion. The reward function is the main conduit by which the car is learning how to drive. 
Thus, you'll find yourself working in this portion of the model the most. Let's break it down with a simple example. The deep racer car is on the left. We'll tell it that all it needs to do is cross the finish line on the right as fast as possible. Since we know that the fastest way to get from one point to another is in a straight line, it's easy for us to determine optimal route. What the model will do, however, is basically break it down into a grid with each box constituting one step. From there, we can use incentives, i.e. points, to teach it central line driving. In the example on the left, we tell it for every step you make, you go in the <clears throat> for every step you make where you go in the straight line, you receive the optimal reward. If you stray, you don't get nearly as many points, and if you go off the track, you should just restart. There's also the potential for a discount for each step taken. This allows the car to limit itself with how far it can look into the future. This can be useful in instances where there's multiple curves that could cause the car to stop or misinterpret the track. To gain more points, the vehicle will attempt to explore all states and actions and build a table reflecting the, the, the value of being in each state shown on the right. This value is the maximum reward achievable from each state when it selects the actions in sub subsequent states leading to the states with highest value. Learning doesn't just happen in the first go. It takes some iteration because it first needs to explore and see where it can get the highest rewards before it can exploit that knowledge. While this may seem confusing, we use this all the time in driving. When you know that a particular intersection has an incredibly long red light, you tend to avoid it. Or if you know that there's a football game happening at the stadium, you might avoid going to that side of town for any errands. To dig, a deep, to dig a bit deeper, let's look at how Deep Racer actually works. Every 1 15th of a second, the vehicle takes a picture of its surroundings. This is what we've been referring to as a step. This picture represents its state, and the ML model you're building will then use its algorithms to infer what the next best course of action is. This course of action results in a new state, and the process repeats until it hits what's called terminal state, i.e. it fails or completes the track, in which case it will restart. Since the initial model doesn't know anything about the best actions it should take, it will start by making random actions so that it can explore. Making these actions causes it to build data sets based on these points, and then it attempts to maximize its point through each episode of, attempt, of attempts. This process is the value function. Namely, the car is saying, when I'm here, my next options for points are this, this, and this. Since it would take an incredible amount of time and effort to build a complete data set for every 1 15th of a second of traversal across a track, there's a point where the random actions of exploring need to be replaced by the optimizing of a path based on the highest points obtainable from a current state. This is referred to as the policy function. In order to optimize all of this, we use something called value approximation and policy optimization. Let's look at an example of policy optimization. This is referred to as vanilla policy gradient. This is just a method where we parameterize the policy function. The parameters are simply the weights in a neural network, and the neural network represents the policy function. All this policy function does is take an image as input and outputs an action thus mapping state to action. We then optimize that policy to get the best action from each state. The goal is to get the maximum cumulative rewards. We train our model to update the weights by training to maximize the cumulative future reward. And in doing so, we give higher probability to the action that leads to the higher cumulative future reward. Here, we show an overview of the network architecture that AWS DeepRacer trains in the simulator. The car takes a picture of the environment and sends it to the convolutional network, or CNN. This network consists of multiple layers whose only job is to extract features in the picture. Once extracted, the CNN then feeds this fully connected layer that represents the action space we provided at the start of the training back to the model. The model will output a probability distribution over the action space and then repeat the cycle. With that, let's get into the guts of the virtual simulator itself. 
DeepRacer is actually just a service of services. Under the hood, there's SageMaker to train the RL models, AWS RoboMaker to provide the simulation environment, S3 to store models, CloudWatch to store logs, and Kinesis Video Stream to display the video in the console. When you start training a model in DeepRacer, the following happens. AWS DeepRacer starts in a SageMaker container and a RoboMaker container in your service account and links the two. It then passes the right parameters to start the training. The experience of state, action, new state, reward tuples are generated in AWS RoboMaker, and after a specified amount of experience is obtained, it is sent back to SageMaker to train the model. The new model is then sent back to RoboMaker to get more experience, and the process continues to loop. The outputs of models, video, and metrics are stored in other AWS services in your account. What's kind of cool is that by logging into each of those services, you can see the data that's being created from your DeepRacer training jobs. When you begin your DeepRacer journey, you'll start with creating the model. From there, you'll choose the configurations for your training. You can choose to alter the parameters inside of the reward function, the action space, and some other hyperparameters. From there, it's off to the races. At first, your model will, mostly, will most likely be only be operating in a random fashion, but after a while, you can evaluate how effective it's running. In the event that you're feeling comfortable with the current, with the current simulation, you can save your model in preparation for your upcoming DeepRacer event. Otherwise, feel free to tweak your model and resubmit it for training. Let's look at that reward function again. During training, we take an action in each step and update the position of the car. The reward function will be used to determine how good or bad the outcome of the action is. By supplying the logic for good versus bad, you're able to help the model quantify the outcome of an action. DeepRacer provides a series of variables containing measurements from the simulator after each action that you can then use to build reward function logic using Python 3. This is the first-person view of AWS DeepRacer as it drives down a track. The main components of the track are the track wall, the field, or off-track, the track surface, or on-track, which includes the two boundaries, and the center of the track. These components are important because we can use them to help determine whether an action resulted in a good or bad outcome. Next, we have the coordinate system. Now, in reality, this is a 3D environment, so it has X, Y, and Z axes. For simplicity, we're only showing X and Y axis. <clears throat> Your car has an X, Y position associated with it. We provide waypoints spread around the track in the center as a series of X, Y points, the superimposed pink line in the center of the track. The waypoints help us to progr programmatically determine how much of the track Deep Racer has completed, where the center line of the track is in X, Y coordinates, the distance that Deep Racer is from the center of the track, the direction of the flow of the track, the outer boundary, and the inner boundary. All of these track components and track waypoints are really important because after every action in the state, action, reward, new state loop, they are variables that we can use to build logic to determine whether an outcome was good or bad. An important note to make is that this feedback loop only exists in the virtual world. And as such, training can only happen in the virtual world. There is no feedback loop on the physical car to help it determine if an action was good or bad. Let's move on to some of the hyperparameters you have available to you. The learning rate controls how big the updates are to your network weights. If your learning rate is big, the model will train fast, but it may struggle to converge on, on some things. Next, the batch size is used for updating the network. Typically, we don't use all of an experience at once. Instead, we carve it up into an experience. We carve up an experience into batch sizes, and use each, into batches, and, each, and use each batch in turn to update the weights. Thus, the network is updated one batch at a time. Epics are any combined series of batches. One epic means we update the network only once by running through all the batches only once. Two epics means we run through all the batches twice. 
So it trains through all of the batches and then retrains through all the batches and then optimizes based off of those two. The discount factor specifies how much future reward contributes to the expected reward. The larger the discount factor, the farther out the rewards that the model will consider. Inevitably, this can slow down training. With a discount of 0.9, the vehicle includes rewards from an order of 10 future steps. With its count of 0.999, the vehicle considers the rewards from an order of 1,000 future steps. The number of episodes between training specifies how much experience to obtain before actually training the model. So basically how many times you want to run through the batch or the epics, which again are controlled by the batches, and all of this sort of plays together. So let's fast forward to when you've decided you have a good enough model to, be, to bring to your event. Once your training has stopped and you're feeling good about what your model has come up with, it's time to download your model and get it ready for the track. In DeepRacer, you can click on Evaluate Your Model and then choose Download. From there, you can just store the download on a USB drive and you're off to the races. Now that we've talked about the software and how to race DeepRacer, let's talk a bit about what's under the hood. DeepRacer is comprised of essentially a microcomputer not too dissimilar from a smartphone. It comes with Wi-Fi, a camera to drive with, battery packs, and multiple sensors. It runs a scaled-down version of Ubuntu 16.04, utilizing Intel's OpenVINO Toolkit and ROS. During autonomous driving, the pictures flow from the camera through the media engine into the Intel OpenVINO inference engine. From there, the inference results are converted into driving actions, i.e. the speed and direction of the car, which flows into the control node that converts these to pulse width modulation signals. Finally, these signals are sent to the engine and steering servo in the car and cause it to, hopefully, move around the track. In the confirmation email you received for this webinar are a list of links around resources with a lot more information than what I've provided for you today. With that said, thank you so much for your time and we look forward to seeing you on the track.